You know, Harvey uh, invented the smile face many years ago, and the reason he invented it was to remind people to smile. And the reason that we formulated this event last year is to make sure we remind people to smile each and every day, not only here in the city of Worcester, throughout the country and throughout the world. Worcester is certainly proud to call Harvey one of its uh, own citizens, and we're very proud to honor him with this national unveiling of what we believe to be the world's largest jigsaw puzzle. This one, we hope, will be entered into a judging that takes place very soon for a claim to be in our very own Guinness Book of Records. So that's very significant, and I think we're going to do it today. As many of you are aware, the committee has been selling pieces to this puzzle to benefit the Worcester Public Library. We all know that uh, the Worcester Public Library is going up at Salem Square and it's starting to look better and better every day. And by next year, we will have a brand new library to celebrate. We have a lot of people to thank for, the, uh, for backing this particular uh, event today. And I'd like to recognize several of our supporters, uh, not the least of which is right here in our Worcester Common Outlets, the Worcester Common Outlets, and also Fleet Bank the Worcester Historical Museum, the U.S. Post Office, American Printing, Domino's Pizza, Sports Alive here in the Worcester Common Outlets, the Candy Country Warehouse, Congressman Jim McGovern's office, the Worcester Area Chamber of Commerce, the City of Worcester, and WTAG Radio, which is broadcasting this celebration live this morning. Live this morning. At this time, in order to present the winners of the World Smile Day Ambassador Awards, it's my pleasure to introduce to all of you Mr. Charlie Ball. Charlie. Good morning, everybody. As advertised, I am Charlie Ball. Thank you for that kind introduction. And uh, it's great to see everybody here this morning, great to see all of those smiles out there on World Smile Day. It's the perfect antidote for the dreary weather that we're experiencing this morning. But I'm sure if we think long and hard enough about it and smile enough, we can make it all go away and the sun will in fact come out before this day is gone. It's my pleasure this morning to be able to say a few words on the Harvey Ball's behalf and also to introduce you to uh, Worcester's very first World Smile Day Ambassadors. Those that know Harvey Ball, uh, know uh, at all, know that he's a man of a few words, and in his view, the very long speech he gave last year on World Smile Day was pretty much enough to cover him for the next two or three World Smile Days. So he's, he's very happy to take a couple of years off from speech making. And, and again, those that know him uh, know that he's always been one to simply do what needs to be done and, and let, leave the speech making to others. And that particular trait is relevant here this morning. Uh, that particular trait is really kind of central to our intent to recognize and highlight and express our pride and thanks to a group of young people who every day exhibit the spirit of World Smile Day, who every day do acts of kindness, and who every day help others smile. And why, though, do we even go through this particular exercise? You know, we could simply build an enormous puzzle and we could simply put on a World Smile Day ambassador button, and we could simply ask the uh, post office to, uh, through their good offices, issue a special cancellation for the day which they've done. We could simply sing a World Smile Day song. We can simply proclaim the day and then go home. But there's something a little bit bigger than that all going on here. <clears throat> because as we're finding out, and as strange as it may sound coming to you this morning, the rest of the world seems to be taking, sitting up and taking notice of what we're doing here in Worcester. And I say that because two days ago I received a call from the uh, BBC, the Broadcasting Corporation, and they were interested uh, in doing an interview with Harvey Ball. They were uh, intrigued by the really ever so simple concept of one smile and one kind act begetting another and an entire day or an international day devoted to that concept. That interview, by the way, will be broadcast somewhere in the next 24 hours to the BBC audience. And that audience will include literally tens of millions of people uh, in Great Britain, in Europe, and well into Russia. Yesterday, <clears throat> we got a phone call from the largest radio station uh, in Sydney, Australia. Remember the Olympic Games? 
Sydney, Australia, and they too wanted to do an interview. That interview was done live at, uh, for better or for worse, 5.30 this morning, uh, our time, which would be uh, 8.30 p.m. their time on the same day, and reached an audience of uh, millions in the greater Sydney, Australia area. Several days ago, we received uh, a number of boxes uh, from a company in Japan. They were gifts for the children of Worcester. Uh, we had them out on the table there a little while ago, and, and they're gone. <laughs> the children took full advantage of those gifts, and, and we're happy for that. The, the uh, president of the company, uh, Cameo Japan Incorporated, sent them <clears throat> gifts for the children here today. Uh, the president of the company said that for years the Japanese people have enjoyed the smiley face design that Harvey Ball had done. And he said he had only recently become aware of World Smile Day, but he asked that his greetings be conveyed to everyone here, especially the children in Worcester, uh, and, his, and his wish that everyone experience and, and have a World Smile Day. And he has promised that now and in the future, his company will observe World Smile Day. Um, we know, for example, we sort of a, a little bit of last minute news, we know that there's an article concerning Worcester and World Smile Day in the London Daily Metro in today's paper. They run about five hours ahead of us, but we had received some email at our website. So when I tell you that people are listening and watching and they're kind of interested in what we're doing and, and exactly what they should be doing on World Smile Day, it is true. We heard last year and we heard again this year from uh, many places around our own country uh, from uh, teachers especially. They are emailing us or, or communicating in one fashion or another, asking us how they might participate in World Smile Day and what uh, ideas, uh, they're telling us what ideas they have and what their, their own intentions are and how they will celebrate World Smile Day with the kids in their class. And we know, for example, that today those, those, those celebrations are taking place in uh, Arizona and Ohio and Pennsylvania and Texas and California and New Jersey.